Hi friends, this is uh, Dr. Ashok Kumar Madhav here again. Now in this session, we will be discussing about managing agri-business as such. Now the objectives of this session is that, at the end of this session, you should be able to comprehend agri-business management, outline the distinctive features of agri-business management, cite entrepreneurship in agribusiness, outline 7 S in agribusiness management, identify the scope of agribusiness management. Dear students, in this session we will discuss the processes that are involved in managing an enterprise which processes, markets and mercantizes agriculture products to consumers. Now as an introductory note, agribusiness management encompasses many aspects of the economy agricultural producers, businesses that provide supplies and services to the producers that is including cooperatives, businesses that add value to the agricultural products and those that facilitate the marketing of agricultural products to an ever-growing marketplace. This economic sector has undergone enormous change and will continue to evolve into the future. Now, therefore, it is important to understand the business concepts economic principles and management tools necessary to operate agribusiness successfully. Knowledge and skills in management, marketing and finance need to be developed with emphasis on the specialized requirements of the agribusiness sector. The management of agribusiness includes accounting, agricultural marketing, price analysis, finance, farm and ranch management, and quantitative analysis tools along with the knowledge in production agriculture. Agribusiness management. Now, traditional concept of management restricted the act of management to get the things done by others. According to modern view, management covers wide range of business related activities. It is considered as a process, an activity, a discipline and an effort to coordinate, control and direct individuals or group towards attaining the cherished goal of the business. Management may also play the role as science, as an art, as a profession and as a social process. Now, as a participant in any management program, one may either be a practicing manager or aspiring to be one. Responsibility and performance are really the key words in defining a manager's role. Performance implies action and action necessitates taking specific steps and doing the following tasks to produce desired results. Specific steps are, now we will highlight, providing purposeful direction to the firm, managing survival and growth, maintaining firm's efficiency, meeting the challenge of increasing competition, managing for innovation, Coping with growing technological sophistication, maintaining relation with various societies, segments, etc. An agribusiness is a social institution. Its very existence is dependent upon its harmonious relationship with various segments of the society. This harmonious relationship originates from the farm's positive responsiveness to the various segments and is closely associated with the task a manager is expected to perform. The process of evolving this mutual relationship between agribusiness firms and various interest groups begins by acknowledging the existence of the responsibilities of the manager. These responsibilities are towards consumers, suppliers, distributors, workers, financiers, government and the society. Distinctive features of agribusiness management. The important distinctive features or the principal characteristics of agribusiness are as follows. Management varies from business to business depending on the kind and type of business. It varies from basic producer to brokers, wholesalers, processors, packagers, manufacturers, storage proprietors, transporters, retailers, etc. Agribusiness is largely and evolved to handle the products through various marketing channels from producers to consumers. Management varies with several million of farmers who produce hundreds of food and livestock products. 
there is a very large variation in the agribusiness. Some are very large, while many other are one person or one family organization. Most of the agribusiness units are conservative and subsistence in nature and family oriented and deal with business that is run by family members. The production of agribusiness is seasonal and depends on farm production. They deal with the vagaries of nature. Agribusiness is always market oriented. They are by far vertically integrated, but some are horizontally integrated and many are conglomerated. There is direct impact of government programs on the production and performance of agribusiness. And there are several factors that differentiate agribusiness management from non-agribusiness management. There is tremendous variety in the types and numbers of businesses involved. The entire system revolves around the production sector. The unique nature of the product and competition within the industry. The majority of agribusinesses are family owned and these families usually have a traditional philosophy of life. Agribusiness has to deal with numerous problems and uncertainties caused by the vagaries of nature. Now, entrepreneurs in agribusiness. Entrepreneurs are people who have the initial vision, diligence and persistence to follow. An entrepreneur is a person who accepts all the risks pertaining to farming and operating a small businesses. Risk associated with entrepreneurship or entrepreneurs work for themselves are independent and make their own business decisions. Whatever income they earn above their financial obligation is theirs to keep. They can test their own theories and ideas on how to run their businesses. They set their own working business. They themselves set prices, determine production levels and control inventory according to the market. They determine the product or service offered and control its quality as well as the overall reputation of the business. They solve the problems. They perform all the human resource functions such as hiring, training and firing also. They set the company policy. Some personal characteristics of entrepreneurs that we can see are Every person is different and unique. However, there are qualities that are common to entrepreneurs that set them apart. The skills needed by entrepreneurs vary widely depending on the type and nature of the business. Some characteristics common to entrepreneurs are number one, independent, number two, self confident, number three, energetic. Number four, organized. Number five, future vision. Number six, persistent. Number seven, optimism. Number eight, committed. Number nine, problem solver. Number ten, self nurturing. Number eleven, risk takers. Number twelve, action oriented. Number thirteen, emotionally stable. Let's know about each of these in detail. Entrepreneurs believe that they can do the job better than anyone. They prefer to control their own destiny. People who believe in themselves and what they can do have a definite in self-employment. Entrepreneurs usually are sick less often than other people. They enjoy good health and use it to improve their business. These people are able to organize their work according to their own unique system. Entrepreneurs can keep tabs on the whole business and see how the different parts of the business fit together. They are in command of the entire business operation. They are able to keep their business moving forward even when tough times are prevailing. If they do encounter a roadblock, they will find another way. No matter what the situation, the outlook is always good for the entrepreneur. Such people are natural optimists. They accomplish what is necessary to carry out their ideas. 
entrepreneurs willing to take on new challenges they capitalize on opportunities to make use of their time talents and ideas they have little concern for what others think about them entrepreneurs have a conviction that they are on the right track regardless of what others may think they are willing to give up things like a steady job in order to achieve their personal and business goals they are not gamblers rather they take risk based on the confidence in their own abilities great business ideas are not enough the most important thing is a burning desire to turn dreams into reality if one option falls through they find another way to do the job or finance the change entrepreneurs are not given emotional highs and lows as their moods change some challenges of entrepreneurship are total responsibility working for long irregular hours and financial risks entrepreneurs must be in charge of everything manage people manufacturing and shipping find customers sell product and to some extent address orders are met being your own boss requires long hours and much work every minute and every hour is used in making the business work proper management of finances is required from sourcing of funds loaning and credit to payment of bills the seven s framework the mckinsey's the seven s framework of mckinsey is a management model that describes seven factors to organize a company in a holistic and effective way this model can be applied in the organization of an agri business company provided that the factors are properly addressed and understood by those who are involved in the agri business system and process these factors are critical especially that they support the operations of the company or the agri business as such managers should take into account all seven of these factors to be sure of successful implementation of a strategy whether large or small they are all interdependent and proper attention should be given to each factor because these may affect all others as well on top of that the relative importance of each factor may vary over time the 7s framework was first mentioned in the art of japanese management by richard pascal and anthony atos in 1981 they had been investigating how japanese industry had been so successful at around the same time that tom peters and robert waterman were exploring what made a company excellent the 7s model was born at a meeting of these four authors in 1978 it appeared also in search of excellence by Peters and Waterman and was taken up as a basic tool by the global management consultancy company McKinsey since then it is known as their 7s model today the 7s framework is now applied and used in other fields which require the hard and soft systems of management the hard system could be related to infrastructure and facilities or resources and the soft system is related to human factors necessary in operation and management of activities so what does 7s mean 7s stands for shared values strategy structure systems staff style and skills these are the major 7s let's get to know about each one of them in detail strategy is the plan of action a organization prepares in response to or anticipation of changes in its external environment strategy is differentiated by tactics or operational actions by its nature of being premeditated well thought thorough and often practically rehearsed it deals with essentially three questions number 1 where the organization is at this moment in time number 2 where the organization wants to be in a particular length of time and number 3 how to get there 
Thus, strategy is designed to transform the firm from the present position to the new position described by objectives subject to constraints of the capabilities or the potential. Structure is the way in which the organization's units relate to each other, centralized functional divisions top down, centralized a matrix, a network, a holding, etc. Business needs to be organized in a specific form of shape that is generally referred to an organizational structure. Now, organizations are structured in variety of ways dependent on their objectives and culture. The structure of the company often dictates the way it operates and performs. Waterman et al. 1980, traditionally the businesses have been structured in a hierarchical way with several divisions and departments, each responsible for a specific task such as human resources management, production or marketing. Many layers of management control the operations with each answerable to the upper layer of the management. Although this is still the most widely used organizational structure, the recent trend is increasingly towards a flat structure where the work is done in teams of specialists rather than fixed departments. The idea is to make the organization more flexible and devolve the power by empowering the employees and eliminate the middle management layers. Now, systems related to various procedures, processes and routines that characterize how the work should be done, financial systems, recruiting, promotion and performance, appraisal systems, information systems. Every organization has some systems or internal process to support and implement the strategy and run day-to-day -day affairs. For example, a company may follow a particular process for recruitment. These processes are normally strictly followed and are designed to achieve maximum effectiveness. Traditionally, the organizations have been following a bureaucratic style process model where most decisions are taken at the higher management level and there are various and sometimes unnecessary requirements for a specific decision, example procurement of daily use goods to be taken. Increasingly, the organizations are simplifying and modernizing their process by innovation and use of new technology to make the decision making process quicker. Special emphasis on the customers with the intention to make the processes that involve customers as user friendly as possible. Staffs are numbers and types of personnel within the organization. Organizations are made up of humans and it's the people who make the real difference to the success of the organization in the increasingly knowledge based society. The importance of human resources has thus got the central position in the strategy of the organization. Away from the traditional model of capital and land, all leading organizations put extraordinary emphasis on hiring the best staff, providing them with rigorous training and mentoring support and pushing the staff to limits in achieving professional excellence and this forms the basis of this organization's strategy and competitive advantage over their competitors. It is also important for the organization to instill confidence among the employees about their future in the organization and future career growth as an incentive for hard work. Develop over time and become relatively enduring features of the organization life. It also entails the way managers interact with the employees and the way they spend their time. The businesses have traditionally been influenced by the military style of management and culture where strict adherence to the upper management and procedures was expected from the lower rank employees. However, there have been extensive efforts in the past couple of decades to change to culture to a more open, innovative and friendly environment with fewer hierarchies and smaller chain of command. Culture remains an important consideration in the implementation of any strategy in the organization. Skills are distinctive, capabilities of personnel or of the organization as a whole. All members of the organization share some common fundamental ideas. 
or guiding concepts around which the business is built. This may be to make money or to achieve excellence in a particular field. Okay, these values and common goals keep the employees working towards a common destination as a coherent team and are important to keep the team spirit alive. The organizations with weak values and common goals often find their employees following their own personal goals that may be different or even in conflict with those of the organization or their fellow colleagues. Strengths or benefits of the 7S model are, what are the strengths of 7S model? Diagnosis organizations which are ineffective, guides organizational change, combines rational and hard elements with emotional and soft elements. Managers must act on all yes in parallel application of 7 yes framework in agribusiness. Now we go to the structure. What kind of agribusiness structure do you have? Is it formal or informal? Are there levels of operation from top to bottom? What are the divisions or units in place for the smooth functioning of the business? Now we go to staff. The fundamental questions here. Who are the people involved in the business? Do they have specific functions to perform? What are their roles and responsibilities? Now we go to the style part as it. What is your management style in the orchestration of your business? Is this helping your staff and operation? Now go to the strategy. The questions that you need to put. Do you encourage full staff development, especially in skills training? Are these strategies innovative to address the needs of the business? Are these helping in achieving the goals of the business? Now, when we come to skills, the common questions that come. What kind of skills do you possess? Are your staffs provided with proper skills enhancement activities? Are you after technical or managerial skills? How do you measure the skills from the business? Now, when we come to the system, is your business systematic, organized and well managed because of the operation set? Do you have a database management system that assists in wise decision making? Is the system supported by the manual of operation? Is this understood by all staff and working for better performance? Now we go to shared values. Is your agribusiness supported by corporate values which guide in the attainment of business goal, delivery of goods and performance of staff. The next point here is scope of agribusiness. It was already indicated that agribusiness is a complex system of input sector, production sector, processing, manufacturing sector and transport and marketing sectors. Therefore, it is directly related to industry, commerce and trade. Industry is concerned with the production of commodities and materials while commerce and trade are concerned with their distribution. Let us use some prominent industry. Industry refers to the process of extraction and production of goods meant for final consumption or used by individual or by another industry for its production. Thus. Goods used by the finer or ultimate consumers are called consumer goods such as edible oils, fruit jams, papaya, pickles, etc. Now we go to the types of industries. According to nature, the industries are broadly classified into following types. Number one, extractive industries. These industries are concerned with the extraction and utilization of natural resources. Example, fishing, fruit gathering, agro-based industries, forestation, 
Next comes the genetic industries. These industries include breeding of plants, seeds, cattle, breeding farm, fish, hatcheries, poultry farms like that and so on. Of course, factors like nature, climate and environment play a dominant role in these industries, yet human skill involved in their production cannot be ignored. For example, intensive agriculture is possible with greater amount of capital and larger number of workers. Now, we go to manufacturing industries. These industries are engaged in the conversion of raw materials or semi-finished goods produced in the extractive industries. Some prominent examples are cotton textile industry, spinning and weaving mills, etc. Now, manufacturing industries can further be classified into five types. Number one, analytical industry. Number two, processing industry. Number three, synthetic industry. Number four, service industry. Number five, assembly industry. Commerce is another major component of agribusiness. It includes all those activities which are necessary to bring goods and services from the place of their production to the place of their consumption. Thus, it includes the buying and selling of goods and services and all those activities which facilitate trade such as storing, grading, packaging, financing, insurance and transportation. In simple words, commerce includes trade and aid to trade. The principal function of trade or commerce are to remove the hindrance of person, place, time, exchange, knowledge, etc. and ensure a free and a smooth flow of goods from the producers to the consumers. Trade, in fact, is a branch of commerce itself. In a way, it is the final state of business activity involving sale and purchase of commodities or goods. It does not include and trade like transportation, insurance, banking, finance, etc. On the basis of its coverage and volume, trade is normally classified into the following types. On the basis of volume, wholesale trade, retail trade, on the basis of coverage, regional trade, national trade. Conclusion In this session, we discussed the distinctive features specific to the management techniques of agribusiness. We also cited the entrepreneurship and seven S factors in accordance to the agribusiness. Finally, we identified the scope of agribusiness management, traditional concept of management, restricted management to getting things done by others. According to modern view, management covers wide range of business related activities. It is considered as a process, an activity, a discipline and effort to coordinate, control and direct individual and group efforts towards attaining the cherished goal of the business. Management may also play the role as science, as an art, as a profession and as a social process. In addition, understanding the scope of agribusiness management will also enable us to analyze the attributes and features of the different branches of agribusiness management and also their contribution to agriculture. At the end of this session, we understood that by tracing the seven years in agribusiness management, we can successfully run an agribusiness. Thank you for your patient hearing.